What's up guys, Tomas Keck from Wild New England here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can turn this into this in under five minutes. It can be heartbreaking when you get that awesome shot, but all of a sudden you're looking at an image that is basically unusable. Now I'm sure all you guys know the feeling of going out to take photos on an overcast day and trying to take photos of birds in flight, but only getting those backlit shots where the bird is completely dark, there's no detail, and quite frankly, it's not usable at all. That's why today I'm going to show you how to recover that image using tools that can be found in Adobe Lightroom. These tools work in Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, and other types of editing software. Now, quick disclaimer, do not use this tool as a crutch, meaning don't go out into these terrible conditions just thinking that you can rely on this editing software when you get home. Nothing beats the perfect conditions of golden hour or good light when it comes to nature photography and any photography in general. So let's get right to it. So here we are at this shot. So I took this shot um, and as you can see, it was very, very overcast. I wasn't able to get any of the detail that was in this red-tailed hawk who had launched off this branch. Now let's take a look and see what, what we can do when we tweak some of the settings here. So here we are at our editing suite. On the right side, we have all of the different areas that we can tweak. Each one of these areas influences a certain part of the image but we're not gonna to get too into the basics here. We just wanna focus on this image. So let's take a look at this. We have the temperature, we have the tint. We're not gonna mess with those yet. When we get some color out of this image, then we will actually mess around with the color. Um, then we have exposure, not gonna mess with that yet. That'll be one of the last things we do. And then we have highlights and shadows, okay? With the highlights, we're going to turn that down a little bit. We might end up putting that back up later, depending on how the image turns out. And then with the shadows, this is the big one. Turn that all the way up. And already we can see there's a ton of detail that was in this image that we didn't even know was there. So look at that, that's awesome. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to the hawk here. Look how nice and sharp that turned out. You know, it's funny because it was so backlit. I'm gonna show you the before and after. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so let's go back to the main editing suite. So here we are. Let's mess around the whites a little bit. Now you can see when we turn that all the way up, it becomes way too exposed. It looks terrible. Turning all the way down kind of makes it look pretty dark. So we're gonna put the whites up just a little bit. Now let's see if we can adjust the highlights. We can keep, turn that up, but if we want a more of an off-white background, I recommend putting it in the negatives here. So now let's go into texture. This is just going to affect your detail a little bit. You can turn the texture a little bit up. You can dehaze it if you like, but in this case, it doesn't really need to be dehazed because you are already working off of an image that was almost completely black just a little bit prior. All right, with the saturation, this image, normally I don't mess with the saturation that much because it turns the image and it looks makes it look a little bit fake. So, but the thing is here, this isn't how colorful the bird actually was. We are working off of an image that lost a lot of its color. So we are going to be putting up the saturation just a little bit. We got some of the color back again. Let's put up the vibrance. And look at that, we got a ton of color back. All right, now we're gonna mess with the tint and the temperature. The temperature you can make a little bit warmer. That doesn't look very good. We'll put that back down. That looks a lot better. Okay, let's go before and after again. Already you can see a huge difference. All right, let's mess with the exposure. I'm gonna put the exposure a little bit up. Looks pretty good, okay. So all these settings you can tweak to how you want the image to look. It's up to you. This is your artistic outlet to do with what you want. Moving down, let's sharpen this guy. So I'm gonna zoom all the way in here. Okay, let's sharpen that image. And this next step is really, really important. So you may notice you have this purple tinge along the bird here. We don't want that. That's called chromatic aberration. That happens most often when you're taking photos of backlit subjects. Lightroom has this little setting that says remove chromatic aberration, okay? You can click that and boom, it's gone. Look at that, that's great. But 
Um, if it doesn't go away, you can go to manual and you can tweak all these settings. Right here in this defringe, you can turn that all the way up and it'll get rid of any other purple fringes that are there. But since this image basically took care of itself with the auto setting, we're gonna do that. Now click enable profile corrections. It'll correct any of the tweaks that need to be put in for that model of lens. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to crop this image. So let's go to tools, hit crop. Now we can crop it. I want to show the red-tailed hawk flying off to the right here but I still wanna show that branch. So we're going to move this a bit farther down. I don't really like this twig down here, but we may just have to live with it. Maybe we can make this image a little bit tighter. All right, not bad. So let's look in the, at the before and after once again. That's amazing. So I completely saved this image by using Lightroom to my advantage. You can do all of this stuff on Photoshop and you can do all of this stuff on other different editing suites, but Lightroom is what I'm used to and Lightroom quite frankly makes it very, very easy. So I hope you guys learned something today. This was all to help you get the images you want. Use this tool to help you get the image that you've always wanted. But I'll say it again, don't use this as a crutch. If you liked what you saw here in this video, like this video and subscribe to Wild New England. I got tons of cool lens, camera reviews, and I am in collaboration with Milford Photo to help you bring reviews of some of the newest products that are out there. Anyway, this was Tomas Keck, and I'll catch you guys later.